Hallelujah. Say, how do you know, Pastor? Do you know because the Bible makes it clear in the blessings of God, there's 30, 60, and 100. Yes. Somebody say 30, 60, and 100. 30, 60, and 100. when you come into his presence, there's still another process. What do you mean, Pastor Ruben? The Bible says the outer courts, the inner yes. courts, and then to the Holy yes. of Holies. Yes. Somebody say everything that we do is process. Yes. process. God knows what he's doing in your life. You might be in a bad place today, but you've got to understand the process. You gotta understand that God is getting ready to bring to you your true identity. God is getting ready to reveal to you who you are. The prodigal son had to go to the pig's mouth and sit in the poop, roll around in the mud with him until he said, This ain't who I am. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody has been rolling around in the mud long enough. It's time for you to come back home to the place where your identity lives. Oh, you're not, you don't want to have church today. I'm, I'm going to have church by myself. Because I know what it is to go in the mud. I know what it is to roll around with the pig. I know what it is to be starving. I know what it is to lose everything that I love and have nothing today. Hallelujah. God had to bring me back from that. Hallelujah. So I could find my true identity. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to hear me. Sometime in our life. I hated my dad. Okay. All right. I couldn't stand my dad. Everything that he did to my mama, I can forget. But in the last days of his life, uh -huh. the last six years of his life, me and him became best of friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One day he showed up in my house and he knocked on the door. And my twins were little and they run to the room. They said, Mama! There's a man at the door. Okay, so I go over there. We had those kind of doors you can see out and you can't see in. I look. Hey! My dad's here. She will open the door, don't you? <laughs> but the moment I see you, anger, hatred, bitterness begin to rise up. I go to the door, open it. Instead of saying hi, Dad, or good to see you, somebody said, Be honest, Pastor. Be honest, Pastor. I said, What the hell are you doing here? Because mm -hmm. I came to see you. I came to talk to you. Okay. Get let him in my house. My wife's my witness. Sat a chair by the garage on Jane and Margarita. We did right on the corner there. Side of chair on the other side of the garage, he sat on that side. And he just talked and talked, and he was fine. But before the night was over, that man went back to his original identity. He got so drunk, so loaded, he began to fight with me, and nothing changed. I'm in the church, mind you, I'm in the church. Didn't even really know the voice of God, but I remember God saying, Can you love him anyhow? This is where your identity comes from. I said, what do you mean this is my identity? Come from? Look at that mess. Look at all that. Look at that. It's not, it's not right, God. This isn't the identity I want for them. This isn't what I want for my children. And he said, begin to minister to me. He said, Reuben, everything that your dad was, you have now became. Oh, wow. I said, what? God began to minister to me. He said, you remember how you hated your dad? For beating on your mom, you did the same thing. You remember how your dad did your mom when she would want to come home and you would see grandma, you would see your mama wondering if he was with another girl? He goes, you did the same thing. Because identity comes from that that you rub shoulders with. And you don't have to necessarily be their friend. Listen to what I'm going to say. You don't have to be their friend in the house to rub shoulders with somebody and become what they are. What happens is that the things that are going on in our homes today become traditional. They become a custom. You know, when you, we would walk into my, my, my mother-in-law's house, or you walked into my mom's house, there was more pictures with guys with blue shirts and jeans with the penitentiary wall behind them. No graduates. Nobody with a cap and gown. And God began to say, you ready to change the identity of this household? I said, how do I start, Lord? He said, you start with you. You begin to realize, identify yourself by what that I called you to do. You begin to do 
knew when I called you who you are. And God began to minister to me too about Jacob. The scripture said that Jacob was a trickster, but God didn't give up on him. God is not giving up on none of you. There's a fullness, there's a circle that you're going to come around and you're going to learn who your true identity is. The scripture said that he wrestled with the angel and he said, today, this night, this hour, your name is now Israel. Amen. Oh, you're not hearing me. Your children's children, your grandkids, your, your family members, your neighbors, you know, the neighbor that's all those, you know, the neighbor, you got know what you guys call him. Hey, Amen. We call him Concha. Right? That one. Are going to begin to look out the house and they're going to be hearing a change in your talk. They're going to begin to hear a change in your walk. They're going to begin to hear a different man, a different woman in the way you respond to them. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's how it began for me. I had to begin to identify who I was. And everything that I am, somebody say everything that I am. Everything that, I am. everything that I'm getting ready to become, I may not be full of it, but I know it's coming. Yes. Somebody said, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. My poverty is beginning to become wealth. Yes. My hurt is getting ready to become yes. joy. Yes. My tears are getting ready to wake up in the morning with a whole different smile. Yes. God is getting ready to change you in your life to the point that you're going to wake up with a different name. Amen. The scripture said he called unto his sons. And his sons heard Jacob. Somebody said his sons heard Jacob. His sons heard Jacob. But the word of God says, listen to Israel. Yes. You kids have been hearing a certain sound from you for such a long time. God is getting ready to change that sound. God is getting ready to turn things around. The scripture says that he lined up his 12 children. The 12, the 12 children represented the 12 right, tribes. Yeah. And I love the one that he identifies with. He calls out to Gad. And the scripture said that Gad's name, G-A-D-I-G-A-D, -A -A meant to be trampled by many troops. Wow. In other words, when Jacob was a trickster and he was everything that he thought he was supposed to be, he gave his son an identity of defeat. Oh, man. Are oh, you not hearing me? But when Jacob speaks from the voice of Israel, the scripture says that he comes to Gad and he said to Gad, no longer would you be trampled by troops, but you're getting ready to bring deliverance. Amen. Oh, you're not hearing me. Everything that you've been through is for someone else to find your deliverance. Wow. Oh, man. Come on. Everything that I've been through is for people to find deliverance. Yes. God don't waste nothing. I don't care what you think you were. I don't care if you think you were the lowest of the barrel, amen. I don't think I don't care if you think you were the lowest in the curb. I wasn't even at the curb. I was the one that ran down the down the road curb and into the drain. Come on. God's using that to bring deliverance. To bring change. Come on. Stop beating yourselves up according to who you were and what you were. The first thing my pastor told me when I came to Faith Temple, was about three or four years, I was in the church, but it took me like three years to get saved, Mom. I was just here, like I said. My whole life was just concerned about getting a hold of my wife again and getting her back in my life. But as God began to deal with me, it was no longer about my wife. It became about me. Hallelujah. But my pastor said, the first thing that we got to do with you, Reuben, is we need to change your identity. I said, we need to change my identity. We need to change your name. I said, change my name? He goes, yes. He goes, Reuben means unstable like water. Oh, wow. I was like, what? <laughs> you, know, you want to look it up yourself? I said, sure. I looked it up, and sure enough, Reuben means unstable like water. If anybody knows about water, water never settles. Anything that moves there, rocks and shakes all over. And I said, so what's going to be my new name? He goes, Reuben, but you have to learn to give yourself a new identity. Uh, Hallelujah. See, everything around you may not change, but who is within you can. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a change that's going to occur from the inside out. If you've seen Jacob, you would have thought Jacob was still there as the same person. But to make the scripture making it clear that his life is coming to an end, and it's time for him to share the blessings of God into the children's life. Our lives are getting ready to come to an end. We cannot leave our children right where they're at. It's time for us to give them their proper identity. It's time for us to give them who they truly, truly are. See, the prodigal son had to go out and learn his identity. Somebody said, and some of us are there. Uh -huh. I had to go out and learn my identity. I had to experience the worst of worst. I had to experience the mess of mess. I had to experience 
All these ugly things before I knew who I was. Somebody said, that's a learned identity. That's a learned identity. I wish I would have been one of those ones that are precept oriented. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could have been one where Sister Diana would come up to me and say, Pastor Ruben, everything's going to be okay. And I would have heard the word and I would have followed it and said, everything's going to be okay. But somebody said, Pastor Ruben was pain directed. How many are you pain directed? Yeah. You got to learn to the bumps in the road. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got to learn by the scrapes on your knees. Yeah. You got to learn by the, elbow, the cuts on your elbow. Somebody said, if you look at the scars on my face, somebody said, that's because I'm pain directed. Yeah. See, there's things that God wants us to do that we can easily learn. Jacob had to learn through the process. Jacob had to learn learning. And some of us don't need to learn. Look at your neighbor and say, I went to prison so you don't have to go to prison. Oh, you didn't hear me. Come on now. Amen. See, like I was sharing with you, you came into our family's houses, there were more people in prison holding than we had capping yards. And when God began to deal with me about change, I began to talk to my children. And if you talk to my ten children, if you talk to the first five, the older ones, they'll tell you how bad of a person my wife was and how bad of a person Pastor Reuben was. But if you talk to the other, the other five, right, they'll call the older ones a liar. That's how well God has transformed us in the process of us finding our identity. Oh, you're not hearing me. God is going to use the process in your life so his glory can be revealed in the lives of those that are close to you. Come on, church. God's process, the transformation that you're going from, from knucklehead to everything. Come on. From the tail to the head, from the above, from the beneath to the above. Somebody said, that's where I'm going. God wants you to have your identity today, church. Amen. He wants us to find ourselves. The scripture makes it clear in Philippians chapter 1 and 6. Read it now. Philippians 1 and 6. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you. He said he is sure. If you read it in the King James, the King James Version, Casper, it says be confident. Yes. Somebody said, be confident. That means every morning you got to get up, you got to have confidence. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, i got to get up and say, you know what, this day is going to be good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't care what my husband does, I don't care how bad he gets up, this day is going to be beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible makes it clear that before anything can change in your life, you got to have confidence. Yes. Yes. Come on. It's so easy for us to go to church and say, I like to just have faith of a mustard seed. Uh -huh. Even in that faith, you got to have confidence. Yeah. Somebody says, I gotta have confidence. You gotta have confidence. He reads. Hallelujah. A good work in you will bring it to completion. Somebody said, He will bring it to what? Completion. Uh huh. Which means that God is working on you, but you have a responsibility to bring that identity forth. Uh oh. Uh -huh. Say, where are you going, Pastor? Where are you going, Pastor? Stop saying the devil did it and say, I just made a bad choice. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Stop saying I'm a spiritual warfare and say, you know what, I just gotta turn it around. Uh -huh. See, the prodigal son, they come back to the father and begin to follow his knees and say, I've been in spiritual warfare. I was fighting the devil and the pig's pit. No, he came to his senses yes. and realized that he made a bad choice. Somebody say, we just got to be truthful with ourselves. Yeah. Gotta be truthful. It's not the devil. Somebody say, it's not the devil. Not the devil. He don't have that kind of power. He don't have that kind of ability. Jesus made it clear to me that he said, before I leave, all power and authority has been given to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the enemy frets in the power and authority you have, but he got to keep you from getting there because if you reach your identity, he has no way to defeat you. Oh, come, on. come on. Come on. He wants to strip you of your identity. The scripture makes it clear that he came to Peter. And if you remember in the story, as you read the book of Peter, the scripture says that he said, Simon, Simon. Uh -huh. Come on. And right after that, he said, Peter. I said, okay, what are you doing here, Lord? You said you changed your name, but you called him Simon, Simon. I said, why did you call him Simon, Simon? Because he was still operating from the old man. Oh, come uh -huh. on. Amen. Sometimes in our life, we still operate from the... Oh. Come on. He forgot that God had given him a new identity. He said, this day forward, your name is now Peter. Yes. And upon this rock, I will build my church. house, yes. this church. What God is saying, and where I'm taking you, people can't believe that you're becoming a church, but you are the church. Amen. You're bigger than this building? That's what gets me now. 
God has been really dealing with me with the names of the churches. How is it that we and the people of God will come to the community, will stand before the lost, will stand before this, and give the people the identity of our churches instead of who God is? Come on. Come on. God wants to know who he is in the life of the people. He don't want to know about RPM. This is a good place to fellowship. This is a good place to gather. This is a good place to worship. This is a good place to fellowship. But God is who he is, and he sits on the throne all by himself. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, begin to deal with me. Begin to say, stop going around and telling people to come to RPM. Can you invite people to me? Can you connect people to me? Can you go tell people how good God was in my life, not how good your church was? Come on, The Bible said he's a jealous God. Yes. He said there's nothing that comes between me and you. Somebody said it's time for us to put God back in his rightful place so we can learn our identity. The scripture makes it clear that he changed Peter's identity. Yeah. In the process of changing identity, he still had to call him Simon Simon. I was telling our Pastor Frank earlier, I said, God, begin to deal with me. And I begin to, God, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. He goes, of course you can. You're still operating from the old room. Yeah. He made it clear. He said, I wasn't in the thunder. He said, neither was I in the rain. Neither was I in the storm. He goes, but I was there with a quiet, still voice. See, we want God to get louder than our circumstances. But God wants you to quiet yourself in your circumstances. Yes, yes. He said, be still and know that I'm God. Yes. In other words, he said, calm yourself down, Pastor Reuben. Stop crying what you don't have. Stop crying what you can't get. Stop crying about what your kids are doing. Stop being bothered by everything your wife does. Quiet your spirit so you can hear me. Come on. Stop coming to me in the old man. That's right. Say, what do you mean the old man? I have to be in the old man if I'm still coming through feelings and emotions. Come on. Come on. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, listen to yourself. You're operating from emotions. You're talking from feelings. He said, not by might, neither by power, but yet the Lord said, by my spirit, says God. There's a place we got to get to that God wants to minister to us. And that place he wants to minister to us is in that place of our new identity so we know how to operate from the spirit realm. Amen. Come on. Come on. I began to say, Lord, I thought it took me so long to get the victory. He said, because you would have been too much spirit. Uh -huh. He said, my grace and mercy is sufficient. Uh -huh. Right? He said, you took advantage of that scripture for so long, you prolonged your blessing. Uh -huh. Paul says, the, 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 the grace abound that you continue in your own matter. Mm -hmm. What was Paul saying? Pastor Ruben, do you continue operating from the old man, thinking you're going to get to the place that God has for you? He said, grace abounds. But it's not there for that. Grace is there for when we mess up. Yes. We're all saying it's there for you, Pastor, when you mess up. Yeah. It's there when I mess up. Me and my wife get into what is Frankie calling? That verbal altercation. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. A tense fellowship. Right? <laughs> is that what grace is there for? No, grace is there because God wants you to get to the place that He has for you. It has nothing to do with my wife. It has nothing to do with my children. It does, but I have to arrive to where I've got to get you so I have something to offer. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I can have something to release. Mm -hmm. Something Somebody said to release. to release. My son who's sitting in prison right now. I said, man, how did this all happen? What the? How did this happen? Years ago, my wife says, I'll tell you what all started. You're the one that lit up his first glass pipe. I gave it to him, Mama. Living in the old identity who I was, I was destroying my family, not knowing I was destroying them. But now that I'm saved, now that Pastor Reuben found out who he is, I look back and I can 
see the destruction that caused. But the Bible makes it clear. In Romans chapter 8, 28, read it. Romans, Romans chapter 8, 28, 28 says, for, oh, sorry, wrong. Wrong for in this hope, so those who what? Love God. God and according to his purpose. So in order for me to see change when I turn around, I got to get a little closer to God. Yes. Oh, you're not hearing me. Yes. In order for me to turn around and see the change that I wanted my children and the destruction that I caused to be changed, I got to get a lot closer to God. Yes. I got to make God my everything. The scripture said, meditate on this word day and night. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. He said, meditate on this word day and night. Yes. In other words, he said, if I don't keep the word, if you don't keep the word before you, Reuben, somebody said dysfunction begins to crack, creep in. Mm -hmm. yes. Somebody said dysfunction. Yes. And a lot of us today don't understand that you have a crack in your armor. Ooh, come on. The Bible That's said right. every day, come on, your, your armor of God. The helmet, the breastplate, the shoes, the belt. He said, put all these things on. But I'm here to let you know that many of you have been fighting a long time. Come on. Come on. Pastor Ruben's been fighting a long time. And if you understand Paul, when Paul was writing the, 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 the scriptures of the, of the armor of God, he was watching the army men. He was watching the soldiers when they came back from battle. He was looking through the cracks of the south. He was looking through the windows of the south. And he would see the men come back. And when they came back, they were tired. But he noticed that when they would sit down, that they would take their sword and they start sharpening it for the next fight. Yes. They would take their shield and they would look at what was all banged up and was cracked. They begin to reseal it. Oh, you're not hearing me. They would take everything, the breastplate, everything that was damaged, they had to come back and somebody say, restore it. Restore. I'm here to tell you today it's time for you to come back to God and let God restore everything that he's already poured into you. Yes. Come, on. come on. See, you didn't come this far because you're lucky. <laughs> mm -hmm. My dad used to talk to us all cholo. He was telling my friend when I swear that. We only got good luck. And I learned in the things of God, there ain't no such thing as luck. Amen. The Bible said he knew you before you knew him. Amen. In other words, when you were in the dope house, he knew you already. Amen. In other words, when you were beating your wife like I was, he already knew me. In other words, when he knew that when I was a deadbeat father, he already knew me. The scripture said he knew me. And the Bible said that his father said to son that he would die for a wretched rich man like me. Oh, you're not hearing me. He didn't come to die for us that were perfect. He came to die to us who had the old identity. He came to, to, to pay a ransom for those of us that nobody else wanted. Come on. I don't think everybody here was wanted. Hallelujah. He's not came to pay a ransom for that right there. For those of you that abandoned me, all those that rejected you. Hallelujah. I know. I've been there. But I also know that they didn't reject me because they didn't love me. They rejected me for who I was. Mm. Hallelujah. Coming to my mama's house, stealing her money. Jacob. Coming to my mama's house, hurting her heart. Jacob. Jacob was a trickster. Jacob was a terrible guy at first. Stealing identities getting people to support him. Haven't you ever wondered how drug dealers get people to support them? <laughs> think about that for a moment. I think, how does that happen? He said, because they got what you want. And you got what they need. Two lost souls thinking they're processing prosperity. I started sharing with my grandkids, my granddaughter and my children. I said, I want you to start looking at all these MTV awards. You know, all these guys who jump on TV and their chains are flying all over. 
Go to their house too. They don't have those cars in their garage. They're selling themselves that you were purchasing. The devil is selling himself and you're buying into him. God is here to tell you guys today, I need you to find out who you are. Even Jesus, when he came down as a son of man, somebody said the son of man. The scripture said that he was entrusted into Joseph and Mary. He has a masterpiece. The scripture said that the Lord imparted him into Mary and gave him a mother, a natural mother. And then he gave him to Joseph, the natural father. Mm -hmm. Joseph began to operate from who he was. He said, This can't be mine because if this is mine, I haven't had sex with her. So what does that make Mary? But God began to minister to the two, and they began to take Jesus from here to there and here to there. And the hour is cut where Jesus is now 13 years of age, and he walks out, and Mary and Joseph are looking for him all over, Mama. They're looking for him. Now, where is this kid? Joseph, where did you leave Jesus? They're looking for him, and within a few minutes, time had, you know, went by, and suddenly they see Jesus, and they go to him Jesus, and they said, Jesus, where were you? And he looked at them and he said, I'm about my father's business. And from that day forward, Jesus learned his identity. Jesus stood between his natural father oh, you're not here again, and his godly father. My daddy might have my DNA, but my real father is Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen, 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 amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus found his identity when he came to his parents. His parents were like, where were you? I was in the synagogue. What were you doing in the synagogue? I was doing my father's business. In other words, I found you left me alone long enough that I was able to find out who I am. Somebody said, these places of loneliness is a good place to find your identity. That little time that Jesus had. See, we make it come and read the Bible. It's like, oh, he was gone for like three minutes. <laughs> no, he was gone for a while. Yeah. I would have been like, Pastor Frankie, Brother Gabriel, and Sister Diane, who put signs on the telephone pole? My kid's missing. <laughs> yeah. Sister Sally, go put them on a milk, a milk cart. My kid is missing. But in that time of separation, Jesus was able to find his identity and be able to minister back to his parents that I'm here to do the business of my father. Oh, you're not hearing me. Mm -hmm. You guys are getting ready to find your identity. Amen. You may not be a pastor. You may not be an evangelist. You may not be the prophet. You may not even be the teacher. But you might be that one person that keeps everything together. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The one that everybody rejected, now you're gathering the family. Mm -hmm. Come on. God loves you, church. Mm -hmm. God truly, truly loves you. He told Peter, when you're fully converted, what was Jesus telling Peter? He says, when you become everything that I am. Come on. Someone said, there's some things I got to do that I got to make right. Come on. Not for people's sake. You're not living for other people. You're living for one purpose and one purpose only. And that's to bring God all the glory. And through your hiccups and your mess-ups, God is getting ready to get the glory, church. Amen. God is really going to get the glory. What, Pastor Ruben? You don't know what kind of man I am. My pastor said, how are you and Diana are doing? This is after like 15 years in the, in the in the ministry. And I wouldn't say nothing because I'm kind of embarrassed of what we've been going through, truly, truly. My wife wouldn't say anything because she's a woman of no words. We would just look at them. Okay, I'm bringing your kids to my office. I'm going to find out what's going on in your home. If you want to find out what's going on in people's lives, talk to their children. They'll say everything. Don't talk to my grandkids. Yeah. And I'm not saying that for embarrassment. I'm not saying that to degrade. I'm saying that because there's an identity God has for every one of you. The Bible, the Bible makes it clear all things work together for those who love him 
and are called according to his purpose. In your purpose, there's an identity. There's something that you tag yourself to. In other words, when they see you, they see Jesus. Amen. When they see you operating in the power and the things of God, you begin to see the Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh, you're not hearing me. Amen. you got to understand you're a reflection of the Trinity. Amen. Say, what are you talking about, Pastor? What do you mean the reflection? Yeah. What do you mean? First of all, if you understand the first person of the Trinity is who? God. And the Bible says that God created everything in seven days. Yes. Which means that God had creativity power. In other words, what I'm saying to you is that you have creativity power. Mm -hmm. You can speak things into existence. Yeah. That's the first one. Jesus Christ comes, the Son. Come on. He comes with grace. Yes. He comes with love. Yes. He comes with mercy. Yes. He begins to change the whole world because of the way he loves. Yes. He begins to teach us how to love one another. He begins to teach us how to look at one another. He begins to teach us that forgiveness was already bought by the precious blood of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's no way that we can operate into the new identity until we know how to leave our gifts at the altar and become everything that God has said yeah. in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was talking to God the last two weeks. I said, God, I want to, explore, I want to feel the Holy Ghost. I want to see the churches get up and up rise. I want to see people shout. I want to hear people testify. I want to see people talk about the good things that God is doing. Come on, church. I said, that's what I want to see. He goes, let go of your own identities. He said, I come to make all things new. All things that are old are passed away. And all things have become new. I don't care what you look like right now. God sees you new. Amen. On the 1 to 10, God tagged you as a 10. Yes. And you'll always be a 10. Amen. God loves you, church. Amen. God wants to do some stuff for you. It's time for us to find out who our identity is. It's time for us to operate from what that, that God has called us to do. You want change in your life? It starts with you. It starts with Pastor Ruben. In order for this church to have change, it has to start here. In other words, the Bible makes it clear that the anointing trickles on down. In other words, in Casper's house, Casper stands in the middle of the living room and everything that everybody receives comes down from him. Everything in, in, in Pastor Frankie's house, he stands in the center. And everything that his daughters and his grandchildren receive, because it trickles down from there. Somebody said the anointing trickles down. The Bible said that flowed down Aaron's beard into his garments, out down to his feet. There's people that need to be touched by you and you only, church. Mm -hmm. Well, this was just let the other church do the work. Oh, we just let Pastor Dana do the work. No. Mama Beer could do her, her job. Pastor Shelley could do all she can. Pastor Frankie could do all they can. B could do all that she can. But there's a work that you've got to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we come together to provoke one another. In the process of being provoked, don't get mad. Somebody said, don't get mad. Don't get mad, don't get mad when Pastor Shelley comes up to you and says, da, 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 da. She ain't telling you because she wants to be above you. There's a destination for everyone in this church that we got to get to. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, don't be the hang up. Mm -hmm. Say, what does the scripture say about that, Pastor? The, pastor, the scripture says, mark those that cause division among the church. In other words, did you know Pastor Frankie? Wah, 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 wah. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, mark them. Identify those. The moment you walk to somebody and start telling them about Pastor Diana, Sister Sally, Mama Vera, Sister Geraldine, you just hinder the flow of your blessing. Your job is not to talk to them. Your job is not to get angry with them. If you understand the Word of God says to provoke one another, in other words, Frankie got to push me to my identity. Ain't nobody gonna push me around. 
And I'm my own man. Okay, be your own man. Stay where you're at. God has a destination for every one of you. There's an intended end. And I'm closing out. Jacob came to his last days. And he gathered his 12 sons. He said, sons of Jacob, come together that you hear Israel. He said, sons, I gather you because I birthed you from the old place that way that I am. But now I'm taking you to the new place that I arrived. Take your children. Take your children's children. Take your enemy. Take the one that you hate. Take the one that you dislike to the place and the intended end that God has for them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There might be one here today that don't know Jesus. There might be one here today that said, you know what, Pastor, you said a whole lot. You said a whole lot. I understand what you were saying about that old man. Yes, he lives in you. But I also want that new place. If that's you, whether you're a woman or you're a man in here, you understand, he said, not my mind, neither my power, but by my spirit. If you understand the spirit realm, there's neither female or male in that spirit realm. That's right. It's time for us to get back in the spirit, church. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to identify. Don't let the crises that are coming into our life shake us and cause us to move. You've been preaching so long, be still and know God, and you're moving. <laughs> You've been preaching about this, and God is my, uh, what does the scripture say about the Lord? Is, it's not my fight, but it's the Lord, the battle of the Lord's. Do you really trust God? Or Pastor Ruben, are you up there preaching a lie? Your living example is going to tell people what you preached and how you believed. Come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. There's a place that God has for you. And in this new place, there's a new name. Hallelujah. If that's you, you don't have to come up here. Stand up where you're at. Wave your hand. I'll have somebody go and pray with you. I'll go and pray for you. <laughs> but those children that you're concerned about, you just keep living. Your change is going to bring them. Mm -hmm. The scripture said Jacob was in his dying bed and he called for his sons and they came. You haven't let go of your last breath, so you have hope. You have hope. That son is out there, he's coming home. That daughter that's out there, she's coming home. You just keep living it. You keep believing it. You're their hope. Or you're taking away from Jesus? No. You're saying, Jesus, I need you to do the thing with my son. And God is saying, okay, I give them you. You're crying out for an answer, and you're the answer. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor, close it up. I'll never shut up today. <laughs>